Okay, hello. Today we'll talk about equations of circles. This might be the most important section in this chapter. You'll see equations of circles everywhere. By everywhere, I mean sometimes. Uh, what I really mean is other math classes, science classes, statistics, engineering, things like that. Uh, if you're taking phys ed in college, you might not see this a whole lot. What is the equation of a circle? Well, what it represents is the set of all points equidistant from some given point. And that point would be the center. Let's start with a simple point like the origin, the point zero, zero. How do we compute distances? Remember, if we have a couple of axes, x and y, <laughs> I guess we'll just pretend those are straight lines, and this is the origin, zero, zero. And we have some point out here, a, b. What's the distance from here to here? Well, we already know. It's a squared plus b squared would be the distance squared. Now we could take the square root of both sides and say that d equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. But they would both say the same thing. And what this equation says... Well, pardon me. If I substitute x and y, these are specific numbers, and the distance for this is a specific number, d squared. If I put this in general terms, x squared plus y squared equals d squared, then I'm talking about all the points that are as far away from the origin as ab is. So when I write something like this in general terms, what I'm saying is that I want all the points that are the same distance from the origin as the point AB. So if AB is on my circle, everything on this circle will satisfy this equation. I've got two other points over here. Call them uh, A1 and B1. They have to satisfy this equation also. a1 squared plus b1 squared equals d squared. That'll be true all the way around the circle. That's because of the way we've written the equation for our circle. There's no way around it. If x and y satisfy the equation, this equation here, then they have to be the same distance from the origin as every other point on the circle. And of course this distance here, is called r when we're talking about a circle here. So what we would usually write here is not d squared, but r squared. It's the same thing. We're talking about the distance from the origin to any point on the circle. But when we're talking about something specific like a circle, we usually use r instead of d, just to indicate that that is the radius. Now, here we have a couple of circles actually graphed onto a coordinate system. Not all the grid lines are here, I just put, just marked off the axes. Well, x squared plus y squared equals 16. That's 16 is our, represents our r squared in our general equation. So don't ever get this number confused with the actual radius. This number is the square of the radius. So the radius would be 4. And if you look at our red circle here, you can see that it crosses our axes at the point 4, or 4 units from the origin all the way around. We can see it in the axes. This point here would still satisfy the equation. The distance from here to the origin would still be four units. What about this one over here? The distance from the center to the circumference would still be four. Remember this is still r squared. 
but our center is now at 1 and minus 1. Why is that? Well, it's because this is a general equation for a circle centered at the origin. The general equation for a circle centered not at the origin, let's say it's centered at some arbitrary point AB. Well, it's pretty easy. You just subtract. In other words, x minus a quantity squared plus y minus b quantity squared equals r squared. Same thing we have up here. Where a and b are the x and y coordinates of your center. Be sure to keep track of the negative sign here. x minus a means that a is your x coordinate, not minus a. If we have a plus sign, that means that in this case negative 1 over here or if this were y plus b then the y coordinate of the center would be minus b. That's the only thing you have to keep straight is to be sure to remember that when it's x minus a that means that a is your x component for the center not negative a. a. There are two good reasons to remember this formula Number one, it's going to come up over and over and over again, and maybe even more often than that. It's important to instantly recognize something like this as a circle, and if you're working with it, it's important to be able to immediately just write down this equation. Just like you know for lines, if I tell you the slope of the line and the b-intercept, you could immediately write down y equals mx plus b. You wouldn't have to think about it where m was the slope and b was the y-intercept. Same thing here. If I tell you the circle has radius r and center ab, you should immediately be able to write this down. That's one good reason. You're going to see it everywhere. The other good reason is uh, when I was in college I was doing some homework in the cafeteria, naturally press for time as a college student. You probably press for time as a high school student. So you do your homework while you're eating. I was doing that and I couldn't remember this equation. I knew this one, x squared plus y squared was r squared. For some reason I couldn't remember the equation of a circle not centered at the origin. I looked up and just then two girls from the math department, I'd seen them around, I was pretty sure they were TAs. I think they were grad students. I was sure they would know, so as they walked by, I said, excuse me, can you tell me the equation, or I think I said, I can't remember the equation for a circle not centered at the origin. They looked at each other and sang it to me, loud enough for most of the people in the cafeteria to hear it. In fact, most of the people stopped talking and listened while two girls sang this equation to me, x minus a quantity squared plus y minus b quantity squared equals r squared, except they kind of drew it out <laughs> in this long, mortifying sing-song way, which left the whole cafeteria staring at me like I was a complete idiot. Don't let that happen to you. Remember this equation, and no one in the cafeteria will ever have to sing it to you like you're a dope. There. Maybe other good reasons to know this equation. Maybe someday you'll be captured, captured by natives in a primitive land and they will say, tell us the equation of a circle not centered at the origin, or we boil you in oil. You won't have any problem because you'll know. Well, there isn't really too much to say about equations of circles, frankly, other than what we just said. The real salient point of an equation of a circle is that you just have to remember this comes from the distance formula, and so does this. And that's kind of the beginning and the end of 
how you get an equation for a circle. It comes right out of your distance formula. So let's uh, let's work some problems and see how this stuff works out. I think you'll see it's, although it's important, that doesn't mean it's difficult. A lot of really important things aren't that hard. Then again, there are some really trivial things that are difficult. For instance, I once saw a girl walk up a ladder on her hands while balancing a full glass of wine on her forehead. One of the most difficult things I ever saw anybody do. But I still can't figure out what on earth that might be used for. Well, these people did exactly what we were just talking about. The center is at minus 3, minus 5, so they just immediately write down x minus 3, x minus, or y minus 5, etc. Remember, if the center is a, b, then the equation is x minus a plus y minus b. So if the center is minus 3, minus 5, it's x minus a minus 3. So the equation they should have written is x plus 3 squared plus y plus 5 quantity squared. And the 9 they got right. That's 3 squared is definitely 9. Like I said, don't confuse something like x minus a quantity squared. <laughs> don't get confused and think that means the center is, the x component for the center is at minus a. It's not. It's at positive a. We just subtract the component. So plus 3 is the same as subtracting minus 3. Other than that, other than getting this completely wrong, he got it all right. Well, I told you these would be easy. Here's, an here's a circle written in standard form, and all they asked you for is the diameter. Now remember, don't ever forget this is r squared, because they will probably always give you this one to offer you the chance to mess up. The answer is 4. You want the square root of 16. 16 is definitely not the diameter. The square root of this constant on the right hand side, that's the diameter. So when, they, when you look down here and you see the 16, don't grab it. You want the square root of what's over here. Other than that, it's super simple, right? I mean, there's no equations, nothing to compute. Well, unless you don't happen to know what the square root of 16 is, but I'm sure you do. You know, this problem over here, we're asked to just graph this equation. They don't tell us what it is, they just say graph it. First thing you should do in a situation like this is recognize this is a circle. Don't start plotting points, it would take too long. This is a circle should recognize it by the form of the equation. Something squared plus something squared equals something else squared. That's always, you know, that's, yeah, we can always call that a circle. An ellipse is a little bit different. We'll have, you, you could put a coefficient in front of here, and that would change things. In fact, maybe I'll graph that in just a second to show you the difference between a circle and some other things you could graph that might kind of look like circles but aren't. This is definitely a circle. And remember a circle only has, well a circle just floating around out in space anyway, only really has one parameter. That's the radius. That's all there is to a circle. Rectangles, polygons, lots of things have multiple measurements to describe them adequately. A circle only has one the radius. However, for a coordinate system, there's one other thing you can talk about, and that's the center of the circle, which in this case, remember, it's x minus a plus y minus b, where the center is a, b. So this is minus a minus 5. So the x coordinate of our center is minus 5, the y coordinate is plus 3. 
r squared is 9, so r is 3. So I uh, just plot a few points that are exactly 3 units away, and that's going to be a little bit off the grid here. And then you can, well, <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> I'm not being graded on aesthetics. This is sort of a circle. It, it really should be rounded out better. I don't know if anybody would give you credit for drawing this as a circle or not. I'd probably go along with it because I draw so badly I can't really fault other students for making bad drawings. So <laughs> maybe if your instructor's really a nice guy, he'd give you credit for calling this a circle. The most important thing is to recognize that the center is at minus 5, 3, and r equals 3. If you wrote this in, minus 5, 3, like that, and r equals 3, and then a really bad drawing, eh, probably most uh, instructors would give you credit for that. You obviously know what's going on, you just draw badly like I do. Well, I don't think you'd have any trouble figuring out how to do this problem. But it looks like kind of a pain in the neck to punch these numbers in here and see if they work. So that's one way to definitely figure out if it lies on the circle. If any pair of numbers here, which satisfies this equation, we plug in, say, 1 for x and 8 for y, and do we get 25 when we do that? That's one way to do it. Let's take a quick look. Let's see if we could, if we had to do this quickly, if we could at least get a, make a quick guess, and then see if we're right. We automatically know this is centered at minus two, four. So there's minus two, there's four, and I can automatically see that I did a bad job of drawing this. It's going to go way up. Well, what the heck? Now here we have a circle with about radius five. Uh, minus 2, 1. It looks like it might sit inside the circle. 1, 8. Well, that's kind of questionable. At least the way I drew it, it doesn't sort of look like it's going to fit, but let's try the other ones. 3, 4. Hmm. Let's see, we're over here at minus 2. It has a radius of 5, so at this point, I don't see where we get all the way to 3. So, I'd be guessing it was, wow, I'd be guessing it was one of these two. It seems to me that zero five 5 might actually fit in here somewhere. So, by making yourself a quick drawing, you might give yourself a couple of guesses. I'll try 3, 4 and see what happens. I'm probably wrong. It's 50, 50. So let's try it. 3 and 2 is 5 squared is 25. 4 minus 4 squared. Uh-oh, this is going to work. That's 0, 25 equals 25. So let's try this one. 1 and 8. Well, 1 and 2 is 3 squared. That's 9. 8 and 2, 10. Oh, pardon me, 8 and 2 is 10, and 10 squared is 100. And that doesn't equal 25. Yeah, I shouldn't have second guessed myself. I was right the first time. It looks to me like B doesn't fit if I got this right. Better double check here. <laughs> Well, if you were screaming at me, you were right. I did all kinds of things wrong. I should have subtracted over here, 4 from 8. Instead, I put the 8 over here and added it to 2. Well, I guess it's time for me to start running for Congress. I've completely lost my mind. So if I wake up and do this right, 1 8 gives us 3 squared, 8 minus 4 is 4 squared. Well, 25 is 5 squared, so we already know this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 
in other words. This works. We know that this triple, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. We know that works. So my idea about drawing a quick circle turned out to be just a great big time waster, didn't it, at this point? I still think this one has to be in there. So let's try this one. This one is more closer to being outside, I guess. It's certainly an easy one to check. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. And 1 squared is 1. Well, I don't think that's 25. Not if I got our final right this time. Let's see, 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. Yeah. I'm thinking D is the right answer now. I've changed my mind. The right answer has to be D. That stems from doing the arithmetic correctly. What else can I say? Well, this question is uh, seems a little strange to me. I don't quite understand why they ask you determine whether the given equation defines a circle, and if it does, rewrite the equation in standard form. Well, the only way I know how to determine if an equation defines a circle is to either graph it, which is takes a long time, or to rewrite it in standard form if you can. So I don't quite see how to determine it's, if it's a circle without trying to rewrite it into standard form. Other than, like I said, graphing it, which would take a long time. But maybe that's what they expected, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and graphed it. And <clears throat> certainly looks like a circle to me. Like it looks like it's oh, centered at uh, 0, 3. But we could figure that out pretty easy from this. We don't have any other x's other than the x squared. So I just, we're just, there isn't going to be an x minus anything here because there aren't any other x's. So it's going to be x minus 0. It's just x squared. But here we do. And we need factors of 9 that add up to minus 6, which I guess would be minus 3. And this is y minus 3 times y minus 3. So that's y minus 3 squared. And we didn't even have to touch the 4. That's kind of cool. Usually you'd have to do some rearranging like they could have put a different number in here and a different number in here. We'd have to subtract part of this from this and it could be a lot more messy than it is. Instead it's just like this. Which this makes sense. We've got the x-coordinate for the center is 0, the y-coordinate is 3, which is right here. The radius is, remember, the square root of this, which is 2, and that looks right also. So yes, it's a circle, and frankly, in my opinion, the quickest way to find out if something is a circle is to see if you can write it in standard form. If you can't come up with this, then it's not a circle. If you can, then it must be. And I think I mentioned something about uh, if we get something squared plus something squared equals something else squared, we got a circle. Well, that's not quite right. Suppose this was x squared plus 4 times y minus 3. Quantity squared equals 4. Well, this is something squared because I could have written this as 2 times y minus 3 quantity squared. In fact, maybe I'll do that. Now I have x squared plus 2 times y minus 3 all oh, the whole quantity squared equals 4. Is that going to give me a circle? I don't think so. But let's graph it and uh, see what happens. Well, when I make that uh, 
one little change. I put a coefficient in front of the y minus 3 squared. And of course, I don't get a circle, do I? I stress it out in the x direction. If I had made this one half, it would probably stress it out this way. But you can see that this is not quite exactly the same form as this, even though it's something squared plus something squared. So it has to be the conditions for a circle are a little more critical than something squared plus something squared. It really has to be in this form. Or you'll get things like ellipses, or what you might call an oblong. You can also get uh, you call hyperbolas. You get lots of things just by playing around with this circle equation. Circle is like the basic closed curve. But you can do all kinds of stuff with this equation and play with it and end up with lots of different shapes. Well, in this one, they ask us to determine from the equations whether this line here is a tangent, secant, or diameter seeing it that contains a diameter. Well, they uh, didn't mention anything about graphing this. I believe they expect us to work this problem out just from the, uh, from the equations. And we can do that. For instance, if this line intersects with the circle, in other words, they have one point in common and only one point, then it's tangent. If this line has no points in common with the circle, it doesn't touch it. So it's just just a line. With respect to the circle, it's nothing. On the other hand, if it intersects the circle in two places, that means it goes through the circle. So it's a secant, or it could be a diameter also. Well, a secant that contains a diameter. If we find that it's a secant, we may have to look at the intersection points and see if they are exactly two radii apart. For instance, here the radius is, this is the square of the radius, so the radius is 3. So if we were to find that this line was a secant which intersected the circle at two points, six units apart, that would be two radii. Then it would have to be a diameter. But so far we don't know anything, do we? There are a couple of ways you might think of figuring out where these two equations intersect. For instance, in the past we have had an equation where uh, it's called explicitly defined this is it's called an implicit equation. This one here, this is called an explicit equation. We have y deformed, de pardon me, de defined, wow. We have y defined explicitly in terms of x over here on the right hand side. Here it's defined implicitly. We could, in theory, rearrange all this and maybe come up with an expression that y equals and then just a bunch of another expression for x on the other side. In other words, y equals some function of x. That's what we're used to seeing. That's This is called the explicit, where everything on the right-hand side is just in terms of x. Now that leads to a, kind of a mess in a case like this. Other things we might try. For instance, if we subtract 9 from each side, this is equal to 0. We could find a way to set this equal to zero, and we could set of equal and see what y turned out to be, and then work backwards. But that's kind of a mess, too. It won't work very well. There's one other thing we can do, and that's just put these two equations together and see what happens. In other words, we substitute minus 3x plus 6 for y. If 
if we do that, we can determine if our new equation, that'll be this equation here, does this have a solution? If the answer is no, then it turns out there are no common points. In other words, there's no points at which this equation and this equation can both be satisfied. On the other hand, there could be one point where it's satisfied or two points. But if we do it this way, we have one equation and one unknown. So this is soluble, even though it's not quick and easy. Now let's see what this turns out to be. When I make this substitution for y, actually it might have been easier to multiply this out, do some rearranging, and then make the substitution. What I end up with is, I expand this and get x squared minus 8x plus 16, and then we expand this. Remember, this is all one quantity at the moment. So this is this quantity squared minus 6 times this quantity. And remember, this quantity is what used to be y plus minus 3 squared, which is 9, and that all equals 9. So <clears throat> I'm still going to have to expand this one, rearrange the terms, and see if I can come up with a solution for x. And when we've got x, we can plug this in here, get our y coordinate, and then we'll have our point of intersection. Or perhaps points of intersection. So if we uh, make our substitution and expand it, we get a great big mess. Well, that happens. That's algebra. Don't be intimidated. Just take it one step at a time. Consolidate your terms, the like terms, of course, and you can end up with something that's not nearly as bad. I've substituted our expression for y into here. And if we expand this, our new expression for y, then square it and we get this. I just did this separately because I'm going to have to stick it in here in a couple of places. Well, one place, I guess. Expanding this, we get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now, if we expand this, we get 9x squared minus 36x. That's 3 times minus 3 times 6. It's 18 times 2. Remember, it's always A plus B squared is always, the middle part is always 2 times AB. So, if, so we think of this as B and this is A, and we get AB is minus 18x times 2 is minus 36x. And, of course, 6 squared is 36. And if we expand this part, well, of course, we get minus 6 times minus 3, which is a positive 18x. Minus 6 times 6, minus 36. Then our 9 over here, of course. Now, now we can start rearranging, and the first thing I do is just drop both 9s. Subtract 9 from each side, and this is all equal to 0. Because setting it equal to 0 is our standard way of solving a quadratic equation. And if we consolidate all this stuff, we've got x squared plus 9x squared gives us 10x squared. Over here we got minus 8x minus 36x plus 18x. That gives us minus 18x minus 8x, or minus 26x. And our constants, well, we got plus 36 and minus 36. Those two cancel, and we're left with the 16 over here. We could factor this. It wasn't immediately obvious to me. Maybe you can see how to factor it real quick. When I'm not, when it's not immediately obvious to me, I just use the quadratic equation. Remember that? That's minus b 
plus or minus the square root of a squared pardon me, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I should say that again. In fact, I have an idea. Remember this. Now, I know you've seen it, but just seeing it doesn't mean it's locked into your brain forever. Standard quadratic equation. The solution is that x equals minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, the square root of that stuff, divided by 2a. And you know that if this stuff in here, b squared minus 4ac, if that equals 0, then we only have one solution, minus b over 2a. If it's positive, then we have two solutions, because this is plus or minus. And if this turns out to be negative, we have no solutions. So if we go back to our original equation, if this turns out to be 0, then the line will be tangent, because we'll only have one solution to this. If this turns out to be negative, then we have nothing. The line doesn't intersect the circle, because there's no solution here. And if this is positive, then we have two solutions, so the line intersects the circle at two points, and then we have to figure out whether it's a tangent or just an ordinary secant. So if we do all this stuff, 26 squared is 676. It's supposed to be a 16 there, sorry. 4 times 10 times 16, that's 640. Our 2a, well, a is minus 20. Jeepers. I think I made a mistake. So if we uh, get our arithmetic right, this is all over 2a, which is 20. a is 10 in this case. Well, 676 minus 640 is 36, and the square root of that is 6. So we got 26 over 20, plus or minus 6 over 20. And the question is, if we were to take the distance, give ourselves a little bit of room to work here, the distance from the center of the circle, which is 4, 3. So what would the distance be from 4, 3 to one of these points? If the distance is equal to the radius, because this is the center, so if we go from the center to the point where the secant intersects, if that's a radius, then we're off to a good start. And we'll have to see if the distance between these two is equal to uh, 6. Or, conversely, we could just do that directly. As long as I started it this way, I might as well check the distance between, let's suppose it's plus. And let's see, we can simplify this to, uh, well, why simplify it? Let's make it 32 over 20. Okay, so what's the distance from 4, 3 to 32 over 20? That's our x coordinate, but what would the y coordinate be? 3 times that plus 6. So we're going to have to take 3 times 32. Over 20. Plus 6. And this will give us our y coordinate. But I should have put a 3 in there. And that's negative negative 3 times 32 over 20 plus 6 will give us our y coordinate. This looks like 96 over 20 plus 6. That's a big number. Actually, it's a, it's a messy number is what it is. And I think I just explained incorrectly what it was I was doing here. The fact that 
the distance from 4.3 to the point that we worked at, let's say one of the points, 26 over 20 plus 6 over 20, say. The fact that that equals one radius doesn't mean that we're on the way to having a diameter. If this is on the circle, it has to be one radius from the center to the point of intersection. This is just a way to check and see if we actually got all this stuff right. If we got all this stuff right, then the distance from 4.3 to 1.6, 10.8, that should turn out to be 3. Let's see if it does. Then we know that we've done everything correctly. And then we can find out the distance between 26 over 20 plus 6 over 20 and 26 over 20 minus 6 over 20. If that turns out to be 2 radii, then we've got a diameter. This here is just a uh, the distance from the center to the intersection point. That's just a way to double check and make sure we didn't mess up here. I hope you have fun watching me bumble around like uh, maybe your little brother in grade school does. The y-coordinate here is minus 96 over 20 plus 6. That's 3 times 32 over 20 plus 6. x is 32 over 20. The y-coordinate for that line will be this. Well, that leads to x is 1.6 and y is 1.2. When we take the distance, just as a check to see if this is really equal to one radius from 4.3 to 1.6 to 1.2. We get 4 minus 1.6 squared, 3 minus 1.2 squared, that's 2.4 squared plus 1.8 squared. And if your calculator is anything like mine, it'll tell you that works out to be 9. Now, the other thing we could have done is up here, we had an equation for the circle as another check. We could have just taken what we had here, our x and y coordinates, and stuck them into here and see if we got 9. And in fact, that's what we did, isn't it? Look down here. We just computed the distance to see if it was equal to a radius. But what did we actually do? We used that equation up there. Four minus x. We just reversed it, and when you square them, it doesn't matter. So now, to finally finish up this, the mother of all problems, is to figure out if the distance from one intersection point to the other intersection point is equal to two radii, or one diameter. And here's our two intersection points. Let's see if I can get room. I should start rewriting them down here. This is all. This part's done. Now, our two intersection points would be. These are the x coordinates now. One of them we already know is this one. That's the plus 6 for, pardon me, the plus 6 over 20. And then we use that to get the y coordinate. So one of our coordinates is going to be, we already have one of our coordinates, 1.6 and 1.2. We'll call that A. What about the other place where this line intersects the circle? At this point, we know we have a secant. We've got two intersection points. Do we have a diameter? Well, let's see here. Our other point is 26 over 20. And this will be the x-coordinate now. Minus 6 over 20. And that equals 1, doesn't it? Yep, 
and if we put that into our line, remember our line was minus 3x plus 6, it's up there somewhere, there we go, minus 3x plus 6. If you put that in here, let's rewrite it, minus 3x plus 6 equals y. So our x coordinate equals 1, minus 3 plus 6, in this case, our next intersection point for the circle must be the point 1 comma 6 minus 3 or 3. And if you want to double check that one, that's pretty easy. We get 4 minus 1 and 3 minus 3. That's 3 squared, which is 9. Boom, you're done. Too bad I didn't do it this way in the first case. Oh well. Now what's the distance between these two? Like I said, if it turns out to be 2 radii, or a 6, we have a diameter. Otherwise, all we have is a secant. Well, let's take a look and see what we got. This is going to be kind of easy to compute. We got, uh, let's take this minus this. Uh, 1.6 minus 1, well, that's just 0.6, right? 1.2 minus 3, well, I think that's minus 1.8. Well, if we make the computation, we get 0.6 squared. Remember that's delta x, the change in the x coordinate, 0.6. Change in the y coordinate is 1.8. We square them, add them together, and get the square of the distance. Well, 3.6 squared is definitely not 6 squared. That's what we were looking for. So when we take the square root of this whole thing, we'd get 6. And that means that the distance between these two points, pardon me, point A and B, these two points here, would be 6. But it's not 6. And that's all we had to figure out. In fact, all we had to do was just know that these two were not going to turn out to be 6 and we'd be done. But actually computing it is a good way to show that it's not 6. So the answer, after all this, is that we have a secant. And how the heck did we figure that out? It's, by now you've probably forgotten what the heck it was we were doing. I almost have. Remember, we had a circle. So that's just a simple little, another equation. And then we had a line. And what we had to figure out was if these equations intersect could say the circle and the line intersect. If the equations have common points of solutions, if there are common points that solve both this equation and this equation, then they lie on both the circle and the line, and those are points of intersection. In order to do that, we just took this equation for y and plugged it in here. That gave us this great big mess and we solved it for x. And we've got two possibilities for x, which makes sense. That's what happens. I showed you that with the radical, whether it's positive, zero, or negative. After that, we pick an x-coordinate. For instance, our, if we choose plus, and we get 32 over 20. And that means our y coordinate is 3 times, pardon me, minus 3 times 32 over 20 plus 6. That comes from our equation for the line right here. We plug that in, and this whole thing turns out to be 1.6 comma 1.2. That's one point of intersection between the line and the circle. And now we're going to do a little check and see if this is one radius away from the center. It's on the circle, so it better be one radius away, or we made a mistake. When we check that, we get that the distance from here to here is in fact 3. 
the square root of 9. So we have actually found a legitimate point on the circle which is intersected by the secant. In other words, we didn't make a mistake. Well, <laughs> actually I made lots of mistakes, but I corrected them. So in the end, we are right. After that, we know it's on a circle. All we have to do is check and see how far our two possibilities are apart. If they're two radii apart, then they're a diameter, because those are the two points where the line intersects the circle. And if they intersect the circle one diameter apart, then they must be a diameter, because any other chord, that's the inside part where the secant intersects the circle, any other chord would be smaller. Couldn't have the same length as the diameter. So what we do is we now check the distance between this point where we chose minus 6, uh, where we chose plus 6 over 20, and this one where we used minus 6 over 20. We've got our two points. Now we compute the distance between them, and we get that that distance is the square root of 3.6, which is definitely not 6, which means we have a secant because it intersects in two places, and it's not a diameter because the distance between the intersection points is too small. Well, that was way too much, and we're done.